All right, good evening, guys. Kind of towards Capital Nightly Strategy Podcast for September 9th, 2024. Uh, we'll start with um, a sniper trade, and uh, this is the SPY 10 minutes. So the blue box is the OR10. Uh, big gap today. Um, let's... Annotation going. So there's the close. There's the gap. Here's the OR10. That's the, it's about a buck and a quarter is the, uh, or 1250 is the, is the standard risk now, the R5. So that's a breakout to the upside. There's your risk box. Micro loss, X, I exit when it hits the VWAP. It gives me a one, two, three entry on the short skin of the dragon. Uh, I take the skin of the dragon on the other side. That's about maybe half an hour. When it crosses the, um, the VWAP, and takes out like the peak of the dragon skin right there. I'm look, I'm probably a little slow getting in. Uh, on the three minute, that's probably a better. There's probably a better entry than that, but it crossed the VWAP in here, and so I get this entry, and then the standard risk box is like this. You can just feel the air coming out of that balloon. I take the skin of the dragon. That's about 2R. PSAR flip. There was a there was probably entry in there on the PSAR flip, which would have paid a little bit. So after that initial uh, failure to the upside, there was two reasonable moves, maybe a third move in there. I think it's easier to see on the three minutes. You probably get more action on the three minute on that one. Um, this one is um, this is DIA on the ten minutes. You get the same large gap. O R ten breakout. That one uh, doesn't fail as fast as the S&P, so that first trade uh, turned out to be positive. And there's a Kata 2 continuation, which paid a couple R. The short side trade was there. I didn't get it. Uh, I did take a, uh, a retracement trade to the upside. That was triggered by like a three on the three minutes. That was looking pretty good. Uh, but it ended up scratching. So both in, both indexes were on the were favorable today after a long weekend. Uh, the individual traders. This is. Yeah, I think the re-entry on Hamad's was a little slow in here. Like this is a this is a good revert. That's a good short. Cuts it, gets long. Uh, wants to get paid, so he kind of gets out here early. I think the re-entry should have been about here. Uh, he gets the re-entry here, which pays, and pays. So he gets uh, that that first minus point eight. Now the three successful trades, I think, is a little too cautious about locking in a micro trade so he ends up being minus 0.1 but we should have been able to get more out of that move it feels like uh ewz this is 10 minutes 
Uh, there just wasn't much play in that at all. It's basically a scratch for the day. DIA, he scratches. And uh, this is one where... I, I, I'm not sure why we're losing money on that one. Hold on. Point one. That's all okay. I, I like this as a short when it breaks below the VWAP cuts it. I, I think the entry should be here. And it feels like we should be getting enough out of that 1.3. And then this, there's a short in here when that whole thing rolls over, comes through the dragon, breaks the PSR. There's enough of a trade to the VWAP. And then it goes another leg beyond. Feels like that was the trade we missed. And this is uh you know too late the second leg doesn't materialize uh clf um reasonable trades on both sides this maybe was a little bit late but to be fair he's waiting for the uh z3 lines to begin to expand so you get the z3 pinch so he doesn't get the one, two, three, but he does get the Z3 breakout, which pays a little bit. Uh, I think that's a good short. You got this sideways. It had no follow through whatsoever. And now it's crossing late in the day below the below the VWAP. You could take a shot at that one. Um, this wasn't much room in it today. Uh, this is Tim on EWW. He gets gets paid on it. Um, here's the, uh, that's like the OR5 breakout. You shouldn't lose money on that trade. The PSAR flip trade um, would get paid. And he gets paid on this short. There might have been a better entry in here. But that's still pretty good. Um, and then he gets a micro loss on that one and he stays out of the chop. So that's still pretty good. His net was plus point, point 0.5. And that's about all that you could reasonably get out of that one today. And uh, Cliff, yeah, he's highlighted the area where, look, you had one, two, three, and there's just... That's three chances to get long, and it never follows through. So when you get the PSR flip, that's a hint. When it breaks through the dragon, that's another hint. And we should be able to hit that one short. And even if you wait till the Z3 pinch breakout, we should be able to get that short. So either one of those, either one of those two entries short is, uh, is indicated. Uh, this is three strikes and the and we're out. We're so tight on this. I'm double check your uh, for Tim. Double check the size of your wrist box. That looks like if that's a point nine loss and we're we're too tight because your one R box ought to be about the size of uh, the PSR flip box. That should be a one point oh loss. And if this little loss is point nine, then our our stop is too tight, so you're getting chased out of entry. That should be one effort long, and then we should be able on. If you had three fails here and then it PSR flips, I'm short that one. And then this one gives you a cot of two long, which really pays off, and then that PSR flip pays you short. So this was a case, I think, uh, you used up all your emotional resilience early, and we're not there for the three genuine moves of the day that were available with basic rules. So I think your wrist box is too tight, and that's uh, that's burning up your capital and your emotional resilience. This is Jonathan with uh, 0.86 on EWW on three minutes. This is well done. Um he sees this, treats that as a kata two. I like that one. 
I think maybe this exit was a maybe one bar too late. I think at the skin of the dragon or the spine of the dragon, we'd have captured more of the available move. Uh, I love that short, and I think this one is a bar late. And only because you have a support here and a support here, that almost feels like a kata too. So I think you might be a little more aggressive. When that fails, though, now what you have is a clear kata two to the downside. When it comes through the dragon, that's where we ought to be hitting it short. And we kept we would capture an extra piece. Uh, that's a good exit. But we'll take point eight six. Uh, on such a narrowly traded range. Uh, and then this is really well done on uh, the first two trades. The point, you get the uh, emerging dragon. It's above the peak. So emerging dragon stayed with it. Good exit. Uh, I don't mind that short plan for the PSR flip. But when that does not materialize, then the primary trend is up. And then failure to fail holding support above the Bollinger Band main and above the rising VWAP, we should we should be able to hit that one as a kata too. And then, man, we would really be in tall cotton there. So this, this is a classic example of uh, if this thing is rolling over, it's supposed to get to the Bollinger Band main and then to the VWAP and then beyond. But the fact that it held above the Bollinger Band main is a positive sign that there's more coming, especially after that first good move here. This was an attempt at failure that failed, so that's a Kata 2 re-entry. Still pretty good. That's a 1.5 for the day. Uh, daily reports. So in the 150-day look back, uh, we're still near the bottom of the 10-day channel. So this is our 10-day channel box right here. And we're in the bottom third of that. and But it held today with a higher low. So that actually is very favorable for a return back up into this region. So I think the next two days... I would not be surprised to see some follow through back to the upside. The fact that it held today with a higher low is a very strong signal to me. It's easier to see on the uh, just the 30 day look back here. Um, so, yeah, this was the this was scare tactics on Friday. But then the gap up that held and it closed better than it opened. So that's actually like the. Oh the first recovery day and now we can play to the three day or the five day VWAP. There's the three day, the five day, the five day high and the piece are flip. So I'm looking for any breakout above say 547 to be looking to get back to 564. I think that's the short term swing move. It's got a lot of resistance to get through before it breaks out above 565, but this is a that's a classic buy on dips and would not be surprised to see that work in the next couple of days. All right. Um bullish normal uh, a two-day recovery is in play, like just talked about. Uh, we're we're in risk on for volatility. Uh, it is meaning that the volatility has come back to normal, and in a bull market, that means that it's ready to resume. You've got all of the indexes, or most of the indexes here, that are firing on buy on dip opportunities for both overreaction and channeling, and that's there's so many positive signals in that that that's actually like a market condition itself. So I'm looking for uh, the U.S. to lead the way tomorrow. Um, you had strength in Travelers and Pfizer. Uh, 
plenty of signals that are on an auto framer. So there's a lot of room for value players to get in there and buy on dips now that it's pulled back and stabilized. So I'm looking for some strength. I like the move in both Tesla and NVIDIA today, too, as market leaders. Um, in the ETFs, strength in XLP. Tons of things on the auto framer. Tons of things on the 551W, which is like a buy strength on dips signal. And that's exactly the kind of market we're in. The fact that there's a lot on the RSI2 that are under 10, that's a very favorable sign of... Uh, of short-term recovery after a sell-off that has been favorable in the past. So there's a lot of signs pointing towards um, buy on dip follow through for tomorrow. Auto framer, you know, 30, 30 symbols better than two to one. That's a market condition right there. And a ton of squeezes today, the absence of volatility and a generally favorable close that has some positive carryover for tomorrow. Uh, NVIDIA, uh, XLK, the S&P Tech, the Qs, Russell Small Cap, SPY, they're all in that kind of pinch and squeeze and ready to ready to bump tomorrow. There's some good technical indicators lining up for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We jump to the frog list. Uh, NVIDIA, Marijuana, Tesla, Intel, all top four, top five looking good. And uh, on the Z score here, oh, you were asking me, you asked me a question, I think, uh, on the uh, percent stretch there, Jay. Let, let me, I gave you a short answer on that. Let me just expand on that a little bit. So I, I use that, that was probably my first effort at trying to distinguish between the psychology of short-term traders and longer-term buy and holders. I take the 200-day uh, moving average as sort of the long-term fair value of buy and holders. So generally speaking, uh, anytime price is above the 200 DMA, that's going to be bullish. So what I like to do is say, <clears throat> excuse me, if the short-term traders have pushed price up into here and it has pulled that far away from the 200-day moving average, I want to know what's that percentage stretch? How much of a stretch have the short-term traders pulled away? Now, as long as the 200-day moving average is rising, then that's really a bullish move. If the long if the if the price action has decayed enough, it can actually make the 200 day moving average uh, start to roll over and then that's that's a warning sign. But right now the s and p 500's 200 day moving average is rising. so that's bullish. Now what I what I do is I go back the last 180 days, or no, where's my percent? Yeah, last 180 days, the percent stretch. And I just compute what is the, what's the daily percentage that it has stretched above the 200? And you go back 180 days, and then I rank that by maximum stretch, minimum stretch, average stretch, and then plus or minus one standard deviation. And then what this is, this little chart right here is showing what the essentially the Z score. Now, where we're at right now is interesting because uh, the black line is the average of the last 180 days. So, uh, this most recent sell off was a two sigma adverse sell, but it has started to recover a little bit. So what that tells me is with the rising lows is that we actually have a technical tactical bounce back to the previous highs as absolutely normal. Like it had two chances to fail further and it did not. So the next path of least resistance is up. So this, a return to this level of stretch would get us back to the previous all time high. So that's, that's how I'm looking at that. 
it's a similar concept to what I do with the four moving regression lines, the 10, the 30, the 90, and the 270. You've seen me use the 10 and the 30 as the fast and the slow. But what I really treat is the 10 is the trader's price. And then I, I check the 270 as the uh, long-term fair value. So there are some times when they are co-located and then you get a really strong upward move of price as measured by the RL10. And that's the RL270 will barely budge. So when I see the R10 roll over, I then measure this distance. And on daily charts, I count how many ATRs has that thing stretched away from the long-term fair value. And that tells me if there was a swing trade move back to the mean. In this case, the RL270 would act as the mean. Well, that's not that different from measuring price against the 200-day moving average. It's just, I've been studying that for 30 years. And and when I see this, this, this stretch up and then it rolls over, can't make a new high, then the reversion to the mean and then overshooting to the downside happens. And then you get a two sigma stretch to the downside. And then you get a two sigma stretch to the upside. Those are those reflect interesting swing trading moments, uh, turning points on the daily charts. That's how I'm using that as broad inflection points. And I think we're right at one that's ready for a upside move like a kata two. So that's that's how I'm using the stretch versus the 200 day moving average. Does that make sense? Okay. Anyway, that's everything I got for tonight. We'll get this uh, published and posted and be ready for them tomorrow. I think there's uh, tactical fireworks tomorrow getting ready. Uh, I was interested in this symbol PLTR. I talked about it with the guys in the coaching call tonight, but um, yeah, it's on my long-term list for uh, for swing trades. Palantir is like an applied AI company, and they're using AI to do uh, strategic intel for governments and businesses. So they're just using AI agents for all source information. And they're using that for pattern analysis and tactical trading opportunities or business opportunities. They got a ton of contracts with DOD for military intelligence. And they just announced today that they're gonna be added to the S&P 500. And that caused them to experience about a 14% bump and they're at an all-time, well, not an all-time high, but um, they're trading around, if I remember, around 35-ish. And the all-time high after their IPO was around 45, which was uh, 18 months or two years ago. And after that peak, they got smashed down to 10, but have now remounted nicely. And there's still a $10 upside to get back to the previous all-time high. But that's a really interesting one-day move. And there's going to be a lot of tactical interest in them. Um, and there's still room to the upside. So PLTR is a story stock that is of interest. All right. So that's everything I got. We'll get this published and posted and be ready for them tomorrow. Take good care.